What an outpouring of support from friends and colleagues of Yash. There are people here from several eras, <laughs> several walks of life, some people looking at the past, other people beginning a career and looking at the future. As you look around the room, there will be some people you probably don't know or don't recognize, maybe most people. That's okay, because we're all here for a common purpose. We're here to honor and congratulate Yash Kataria for his contributions to the Department of Medicine, to respiratory health, to research, and to Eastern North Carolina in general. So I'm very delighted to have you all come here. Now, before we get started with dinner, I'd like to make a couple of housekeeping comments. Uh, the restrooms are through this door to the left. Our plan is to have dinner first, and during near the tail end of the dinner, we're going to begin the program with a number of speakers making some brief comments, along with a kind of an interesting musical tribute I think you, you'll find fun. So we're excited about that. <clears throat> At this time, I'd like to introduce Dr. Carol Novick of the ECU Medical Foundation, and she's going to make a couple of brief comments. I want to thank everyone that worked so hard to make this event possible tonight, particularly members of the Kataria family, Anjali, Kataria, and Neil, and also Dr. Kavuru for all his hard work, and Renee White of our staff that worked so hard to make this come about. But mostly I want to thank all of you who are, have assembled here tonight in celebration, and also those of you that have been contributors to the endowment that will in perpetuity support the Yash Kataria Research Day. And I'm pleased to announce that we are halfway to our $100,000 goal of endowing this day. And please give yourselves a round of applause for that generosity. <laughs> Dr. Kataria is certainly an important person to East Carolina University and the Brody School of Medicine. And you'll be hearing much more about that as the evening goes on. So enjoy yourselves, and again, welcome, and so glad that you're here. Uh, at this time, uh, before we begin the service, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Earl uh, Carvathian to do a brief invocation for the dinner. Well, let the festivities begin. Let's have fun. What an amazing group of scientists to have in, in one division uh, to come right out of training. Uh, Yash was uh, part of such a wonderful faculty at that time of clinical scientists. Uh, and and Mani's going to bore down on this more tonight and talk about Yash's career. Uh, Dr. Bromberg is here from Chapel Hill. He will tell you about uh, the Berry Hill Lecture at Chapel Hill where we actually honor a, a faculty member because it's amazing how we have these internationally known scientists who really are not that well known in, in their own home. And I think you're going to find that tonight. I, I must confess, Yas, I, I knew of your career, but boy, in reviewing these slides, I, 
There's some really interesting stuff in there I think you're going to really enjoy. So <clears throat> I'm going to start out and just tell you a little bit about what Greenville and ECU was like. Uh, we're going to have some uh, Grecian formula uh, moments here because we're all going to recognize our hair color and loss of hair over the time. Uh, but some interesting times here. Uh, this goes back. This is uh, Ed Monroe over here on the on the uh, your right, looking uh, just as he does sitting there next to me. Ed, great picture. Is um, uh, this is back at the start of the uh, the school? Some of the early plans. This is actually a slide of an uh, agreement signed between Ben Burroughs Welcome uh, and ECU. Uh, I'm sorry. This is out of uh, 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 order here. Forgive me. <clears throat> this is a listing of, of uh, the original founding faculty. Uh, many of your names are on here. I see many of you in the audience tonight. Um, really speaks to, to again, the, the extraordinary start we had and, and to really our youth because so many of you are here tonight. <clears throat> again, Ed, we, uh, I've got all the pictures from my table. I don't know how I could pull all that off, but um, and the, you, the rest of you are not safe yet. This is a, um, a, a, and those of you who are not around at the time, a huge fight, I guess it's apropos that, that Dr. Bromberg is here today, a huge fight between Chapel Hill and, and ECU about whether we're gonna have a med school or not. And for those of you that are not dyslexic like me, can't read this, it says um, ECU med school to be under control of UNC and some things never change. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Nick, I realized I shouldn't have said that. Uh, this is uh, Leo Jenkins, who some of you probably only know from a name on the building. Extraordinary human being, again, uh, speaking to a time of, of, of such a wonderful pioneering spirit here at, at Greenville. Uh, the, um, um, the giant killers, as uh, Pat Dye used to call them back in the mid-70s. <clears throat> again, uh, Ed's here. Uh, Dr. Hayek, many of you remember, uh, one of the deans uh, early on in the school. And this is uh, digging the pit, I guess we'll call it, there by the hospital where the Brody Building was started. And for those of you that complain about Generation Y, trust me, I was a student uh, back then. Uh, you couldn't get students to do anything back then either, so uh, <laughs> don't, uh, don't feel so sorry, Susie. It was that way back then. <laughs> um, this is just uh, part of the construction. Again, this is the hospital in a different shade. Um, and, and I do, as Ed and you and I were talking, I do remember when that side of Moy was a cornfield. I am, I am that old. This is an amazing picture I didn't find. Um, this has got to be the world's smallest medical student somewhere in here. Uh, I, I hope that's someone's child. I, uh, I think this is Bill Brown, I'm not sure. Again, I need some new glasses, and, and I know the pixelation's bad, but things being what they were in the 70s. Uh, I used to be in a lab right up here years ago, and uh, amazing time to be in Ragsdale. This is the building, for those of you that are young, uh, that the med school actually got started in over on, on the East Campus, and just a real uh, neat time uh, at the start of the school here. And this is the, um, the ribbon cutting. Many of you recognize uh, Sam Brody, uh, our, our then governor. Uh, Hunt, uh, Leo there, uh, Dr. Lopez, um, and that's the start of the, uh, the Brody Building. And here's more pictures from the ceremony. Uh, this is the old hospital, and boy, what a, what a change. Most of you recognize that now as the county office building. And of course, this is, uh, actually this picture is dated now, isn't it? It's amazing. We're, we're joining the ranks of the major medical centers where uh, a building crane is a permanent fixture. Again, Dr. Aiken, I tried to get somebody, uh, pictures from everybody at the table here. Glad to have Dr. Aiken here tonight. And of course, here's Dr. Lopez. Uh, many of you recall from this era. Bill Wall, again, I, my bifocals fail me, Bill. I know you're out there somewhere. But uh, one of the early uh, nephrologists who's still with us and still thinking those great thoughts, Bill. And of course, Gene Firth, many of you recall. Uh, this is the original faculty, and um, this is, um, sorry, Yash, I got to you know, be fair to everybody. This is Yash. 
Sudesh is looking at him very funny right now. <laughs> great picture, great picture. And this is getting a little personal because it's getting close to my, uh, my era here. I think many of you recognize many of the faces here. Uh, the, um, I could take the time to fill in the name. I, I, I saw Bill here tonight somewhere. Again, I can't, I can't see these days. Uh, let's see who else is here. That, of course, Yash is there. And uh, they were the section heads. Yash, I would say that's about 91, somewhere around there, maybe 92, something like that. Yeah. And here we are. So, so now uh, I'm going to turn this over to uh, Mani Kaviru. Mani uh, actually introduced himself uh, earlier. I, I will tell you two things uh, about Mani here. Mani has continued the incredible tra uh, tradition we've had in, in pulmonary division chiefs, starting with Yash, moving to Ralph Watley, uh, Greg Pape, and, and, and now Mani. Mani has, uh, along with the Kataria family, done an amazing job in, in, in putting this thing together. And, and what he's going to do is, is actually part of why Monty's here today. Um, uh, a, a, a collaborative interest that they have in a specific set of lung diseases. And, and so Monty's going to actually take you through the scientific part of, of uh, Dr. Kataria's uh, career. So Monty, I'm going to uh, turn this over to you now. We're here to honor and pay tribute to Yash, and I want to share a few thoughts that I have. Uh, the question is, what is Yash all about? Well, the way uh, my interactions and my experience is that Yash is amazingly curious, very engaging, innovative, perhaps contrarian, a what-if kind of a guy. These are all good things, and these are all what I would attribute to be a good educator. Somebody that's critical, that's asking questions and challenging you and so forth. He is a, uh, an, uh, uh, a prototype of a translational researcher, a clinician scientist interested in scholarship as evidenced by 70 publications. He uh, researches an attitude, and Yash projects an attitude of inquiry and research and trying to ask the question, can we do better than what we're doing? Yash is service oriented. Having been here 35 years, he's certainly loyal to the Brody School of Medicine, Pitt County Memorial Hospital, and Eastern North Carolina. Even though he's got roots and so forth for so many years in a, in a small region of Eastern North Carolina, Yash has managed to get national and international acclaim. It's very interesting. Uh, the choice of a disease that Yash championed is a disease called sarcoidosis. Many of you physicians in the audience certainly are quite familiar with that. And for those of you that are not, it is a disease that affects the lungs and different parts of the body. And interestingly, Eastern North Carolina is ground zero for sarcoidosis. Southeastern United States has a high prevalence of sarcoidosis. So Yash has identified that as a disease that he commonly sees in his clinic. And I would say over the last 35 years, he probably has one of the largest cohorts of patients that anybody cares for in sarcoidosis. So he's identified that as a clinical interest and also made investigation and research out of that. Yash is, of course, a family man, as you can tell by siblings and children and grandchildren here. And he's very community service oriented. Let me give you the facts. Yash was born and grew up in Punjab. He received his primary medical degree at Glancy Medical College in Amritsar, Punjab. At a pretty early age, he migrated to England in 1961 to train in surgery and tropical medicine in Liverpool. That was an era with migration out of countries to, to come to England and the United States was pretty, pretty common. He did training in chest diseases at the Welsh School of Medicine at the University of Wales in Cardiff. 
He was a registrar for a couple of years under a well-known epidemiologist. He received his MRCP in 1967 and subsequently was elected fellow of the Royal College of Physicians in Edinburgh. Pretty significant prestige. prestige. He subsequently migrated uh, to um, Chicago and served as a chief resident at Mount Sinai and did a postdoc subsequently in Ohio State University. Was on faculty in the pulmonary division at OSU between 72 and 75 where he was the director of the PFT lab. And, he, and that's where Yash and uh, Dr. Phil Bromberg uh, uh, had a mentorial relationship and, and so forth. And, and Dr. Bromberg will make comments about uh, uh, his, uh, his views. Uh, for, if I can get my laser. Right, so this is a, a portion of Northwest India where Yash grew up in what's called the Punjab region, which is a breadbasket of India. Um, and he still has a lot of strong ties and actually supports and contributes to the, the medical institutions there in a philanthropic way. This is the oldest picture that I could get my hands on from the Kataria family. And uh, I would challenge you to pick out Yash. Right here. This is a long time ago. This is 1963. And uh, Dr. Bowen reminded me the Beatles were doing their thing in Liverpool at the time. Uh, this is a, uh, a quiz question for you. Who is this guy? Not Walter Cronkite. He wrote the, a book, a seminal book, called The Effectiveness and Efficiency, Random Reflections on Health Services, published in 1972. This is, a, uh, this is Archie Cochran, Dr. Cochran. And this is the epidemiologist that Yash trained under and was a major influence in his early training and his early years. Uh, many of you would know that this is Archie Cochran famed for the Cochrane Center and the Cochrane Database, which was really a, a hotbed of epidemiologic <laughs> research and so forth. And uh, Dr. Uh, Cochrane really promulgated the idea that healthcare resources are limited. So if we're going to be uh, rendering resources, we got to be very critical and use randomized controlled trials and meta-analyses so we make clinical decisions that are really optimal and so forth. So Dr. Cochran has been a very strong influence. Of course, Cardiff in England, in South Wales, was also a hotbed for the Industrial Revolution and uh, the early descriptions of coal miners' pneumoconiosis and so forth. And uh, here is Yasha uh, getting his hands dirty uh, in the coal mines, uh, looking, doing some field work, I guess. And can I point Yasha out? Uh, I think somewhere here. Uh, I mentioned Dr. Bromberg as uh, being a uh, next big influence on Yasha's growth and as, a, as a person and as a professional at Ohio State. And uh, Dr. Br Bromberg um, uh, was instrumental in the next phase of Yasha's development and both Dr. Bromberg and Dr. Kataria uh, were at Ohio State for a number of years before they both departed to North Carolina. And Dr. Bromberg will tell you more about that. So Yash comes to Eastern North Carolina he was recruited to the Brody School of Medicine by the first chair of medicine for the four-year School of Medicine, Dr. Gene Firth, to start the Division of Pulmonary Disease in 1978. And Yash was, in fact, the first pulmonologist east of I-95. He remained as a division chief at the School of Medicine and service chief at Pitt County Memorial Hospital from 78 to 95. Now, What's, what's going on in parallel to Yash's career is the development of the field of pulmonology. These were very formative years for pulmonology. Uh, fiber optic bronchoscopy was introduced in the early 70s from Japan uh, as a clinical diagnostic tool. And Yash imported that into Eastern North Carolina. Uh, the, subsequently, the fiber optic bronchoscopy was applied as a research tool. And what was also happening in this time period is the growth of lung immunology which is a pretty uh, um, uh, transforming sort of an event in our understanding of 
what's happening in the lungs and so forth. The use of bronchoscopy for research into the lungs, and Yash was very much involved in that process. This is also a time period in the early 70s where technology for lung function measurements and so forth. Uh, there's a revolution that was happening in standardizing PFTs, and the instrumentation has improved and so forth. And I'll show you some pictures of the old PFT machines at PCMH, very different from the current studies uh, techniques that we use. Critical care medicine is a young specialty, and this came to fore in the 70s, and in fact, we didn't have our critical care boards till the late 80s or so. But this is all a transforming time period that Yash participated in. Now, I apologize for the, the really geeky nature of this slide, <laughs> but it uh, helps to outline the disease that Yash was passionate about, a disease called sarcoidosis, a disease of unknown etiology even today. And what this tries to do, this slide, is to show a number of milestones over the last 100 years about this disease since its early descriptions by, by Beck. And um, over the years, uh, there's been a number of important um, developments in our understanding of this disease of sarcoidosis. And you'll see prominently that, um, that Yash Kataria has had a number of uh, seminal contributions to the sarcoid literature. And one of the things as I, as a pulmonologist interested in sarcoidosis, when I look at the literature, view Yash's contribution is that he kind of uh, promulgated the idea that sarcoidosis is a disease of pro-inflammatory nature as opposed to a depressed immunity, uh, an anergic type of a disease, which was really felt for a lot of years. And this was a paradigm shift that occurred in, in our understanding of you know, pulmonary medicine and sarcoidosis. And uh, he did this based on uh, experiments in the laboratory at East Carolina University uh, by taking blood from patients with sarcoidosis. And uh, subsequent investigators like Gary Aninaki and others have applied that to uh, bronchos bronchoscopic specimens from the lungs and so forth. Uh, both uh, Dr. Park, who's in the audience, and Dr. Holter, who's also in the audience, were partners in crime, if you would, with Dr. Kataria in some of these descriptions of, uh, of sarcoid immunology and so forth. Now, Yash was a, uh, was a clinician, was a clinician scientist, and he was kind of uh, obsessed with this thing called the quime antigen. And he's shown in a number of pictures where he's inspecting this serum, or this, this concoction, I should say, ground up from spleen of patients with sarcoidosis. This is a very important driver in the early investigation into sarcoidosis. And Yash is shown here with such a vial. Now, this is a... I kind of wondered what Yash was doing here. Was he doing yoga, <laughs> deep breathing exercises? But this is actually uh, uh, the older PFT laboratory with the bellows lung function uh, device. And he's kind of hooked up to one of these devices in probably in the mid 70s or so. Of course, this contraption has really gotten miniaturized and microprocessed and so forth in our current uh, practice. Uh, Yash uh, engaged a lot of trainees and a lot of faculty and junior faculty. Several of the doc faculty that he's recruited, Dr. Holter and Dr. Mann and, and others, uh, you'll hear from. <clears throat> now, I've seen Yash at national meetings, actually international meetings, and this is a common pose that Yash has. That is, he gets up to the microphone and asks a, a, a disarming question that leads to a lot of subsequent discussion. Yash carried the message from Eastern North Carolina to all over the world. He was a fixture at the National Thoracic Society meetings, the WASOG meetings, the premier meeting for International Sarcoid Society. Yash is a, kind of on a first name basis with most of the people there. Now for those of you that are historians, medical historians, this is a picture from a WASOG meeting in Germany. And, uh, this woman right here is Carol Johns. And Carol Johns is a pulmonologist, a sarcoid expert, probably has as big a cohort for sarcoid patients as Yash does at Johns Hopkins. And Carol Johns is credited with being a pioneer in women in medicine. She's gotten a lot of awards and national uh, recognition and so forth. And Yash and Sudesh here are pictured uh, with Carol Johns and her husband. Uh, for those of you that are, that are uh, curious and interested, this gentleman uh, is uh, Friedrich Wegener. Wegener is a German pathologist where a disease that affects blood vessels, multi-organ disease, 
is named after Friedrich Wegener, who uh, Friedrich Wegener died, I think, in 1990, and Carol Johnson, 2000. So these are giants in, in, in our specialty and such. Not only was Yash taking the message to other parts of the country and other parts of the world, but he was bringing the world back to Eastern North Carolina. And I'm gonna show you some pictures of individuals that at the time, I don't know if they were giants, they certainly have become giants in many of our eyes and people that are writing chapters and so forth. This is Herb Reynolds in the Brody School of Medicine at one of Yash's conferences. And Herb Reynolds was at the NIH in the formative years of immunology and lung disease subsequently went to be the chair of medicine at Hershey, and then back at the NIH to, to head one of the branches of, uh, of lung disease. This is another uh, person who um, uh, is Roger Bone, was very uh, instrumental in some early studies dealing with uh, sepsis and ARDS, and he had a landmark study in the uh, New England Journal uh, debunking steroids in sepsis. And Roger Bone was here at, uh, under uh, Yash's uh, uh, invitation and so forth. Now, Yash was not all business and all work. He has a family, as you know. And uh, this is uh, when Yash and Sadesh, uh, I think, initially moved to Greenville in the mid-70s or late 70s. And uh, this is uh, um, Anjali, their daughter. And Yash was busy. He was uh, not just working all the time in the lab. Josh was gracious. He had uh, various people in, in uh, engaging them in, in his house and so forth. Um, this is a picture of uh, Dr. Carvathan in their house. Josh is the oldest of six siblings, all of whom are here tonight. This is a picture at, um, at I think, uh, uh, his son's and Neil's wedding a few years ago. I'm gonna stop here. Um, what we'll do at this point is, I'm gonna turn over the podium to the other speakers that um, wish to make some comments here uh, this evening. And actually, my program tells me, the first person is uh, Dr. Ed Monroe. Dr. Ed Monroe was the former Vice Chancellor of Health Sciences of the Brody School of Medicine. Uh, Dr. Monroe? Sorry I took so long to get up here, but I can't move any faster. <laughs> when the Katarias moved to Greenville in 1978, I had the opportunity to meet both of them early in their, during their arrival. And I was very surprised at the amount of affection that was obvious between the two of them reminded me of my relationship with my wife, who unfortunately is at the beach right now. <laughs> I don't think Sudesh ever does that to Yash. <laughs> in 1978, when they arrived in Greenville, we were beginning to grow as a county as a town becoming a city, as a medical center for Eastern North Carolina, far beyond the imagination of those of us who had been here at that point 22 years in 1978. And if you do the arithmetic, that means that I came in 1956. I was starting to say that I was the oldest living physician in this audience tonight until I saw Bill Wall and Earl Trevathan. <laughs> Earl is a native of Pitt County and had been here practicing pediatrics one or two years when I arrived. I stayed in practice for 12 years, and with apologies to Dr. Blumberg, I got fed up 
with the attitude of the two medical schools up in the Piedmont, the center part of the state, about their solutions for the health care manpower problem in the eastern part of the state and the western part of the state. So I left practice and went to work at East Carolina under a guy named Leo Jenkins, who was a great outspoken New Jersey Yankee moving down to Greenville, North Carolina to work at East Carolina and becoming the president of East Carolina. He was a great public speaker voicing the need for more of everything in Eastern North Carolina. More academics, more health manpower, better health status, all of the things that the medical center today is trying to do along with the university and the people who support it. There are lots of stories I can tell. They're somewhat irrelevant to anybody who was not here at the time. But those of you who want to know about what was life like back in the early years, there are a couple of books out. One of them was by Wayne Williams about the developing years of the medical school, the arrival of Bill and Evelyn Lopez to take over the leadership roles for that institution. And more recently by Walter Pores, who's also here, about the growth of the medical school from 1980, approximately, on up to now. He'll probably write a sequel before he retires because he doesn't know how to be quiet about it. <laughs> he ignores the fact that he's old enough to be concerned about his health status until he has an episode that reminds him of that, and I'm not going to go into that. However, recognize that there are people among you who've been here a while, also people who have benefited greatly from the Qataria's family presence. I'm one of those people because I had a daughter who was critically ill in the hospital in the early 90s that Yash helped take care of. Unfortunately, she didn't make it, but it wasn't because he didn't try. He did try valiantly. He is a caring, tremendous physician who deserves all of the accolades that we can provide him. Congratulations, Josh. Good evening. I don't want to travel under any false pretenses. I'm listed as MD in the program. <laughs> in the words of my children, Dad, you were the wrong kind of doctor. <laughs> Monty asked me to say a few words this evening. He kept focusing on the brevity of my remarks. It reminded me of a student who once worried that I was going to speak too long, introduced me by saying, and here's Chancellor Aiken for a few brief, short words. <laughs> <clears throat> well, my wife Joanne and I extend best wishes to you, Yash, to you, Sudesh, and to your family on this much-deserved recognition of your work in the betterment of medical care the people of Eastern North Carolina. Your record of achievement in the provision of first-rate clinical care and the advancement of the research agenda of the Division of Pulmonary and Critical Care Medicine is worthy of great commendation. Your curriculum vita reflects a career of exemplary service to this university and to your profession. It carries the underlying message 
of a man who was willing to leave the professional comforts of the Cleveland Clinic for what were, in 1978, the very real challenges of a fledgling medical school located in a rural setting known best for its tobacco and hog farms. The record of growth and splendid development of the Brody School of Medicine is paralleled by your own record of accomplishment and leadership as a faculty member and as administrator. You came to Greenville as one of a band of veritable medical pioneers with a dream for the future. And now, some 30 years later, you and we can see the fruits of that shared dream. I wonder, Yash, if you or any of your fellow pioneers could have possibly imagined the nature of the sheer physical growth that has come to pass with a medical school and hospital constellation that has emerged, as Bill Lopez was fond of saying, from a cornfield on the edge of town. I've served for the past several years on the ECFMG Board of Trustees. That service has allowed me to understand the important role and the extent of participation in U.S. medicine played, uh, played by doctors who have received their undergraduate medical degree abroad. You have allowed me to personalize that understanding. Your contributions to American medicine are remarkable, and we have benefited greatly from your decision to pursue, pursue your career in the USA. Speaking of ECFMG, I bring you greetings from Dr. James Halleck, ECFMG President and former Vice Chancellor for Health Sciences and Dean of the Brody School of Medicine. When I told Jim Halleck of this event in your honor, he asked me to convey the following to you. I extend my sincere congratulations to Yash and his family for his significant contributions to the School of Medicine, the Department of Medicine, and the Division of Pulmonary Medicine. He was a stalwart supporter of the new school, and his tenure added stability to the school during my administration. Best wishes to Yash and his family on this occasion of a tribute to him. I noted, Yash, that the sleep center was a part of your set of responsibilities during your tenure. As a recent beneficiary of that center's operation, I wish to report that I'm sleeping much better these days. <laughs> in a much larger sense, Yash, Because of your many contributions over the years, we all live and sleep much healthier and better. Congratulations on this much deserved honor. To change an old Roman expression, friends, Greenville, people, and countrymen, I am honored to comment about Dr. Yash P. Terry's career at East Carolina University School of Medicine. I came to ECU in 1971 to develop courses in clinical sciences for the medical students in the first year program. Having been a professor of medicine at the University of Kentucky College of Medicine, where I held the Kentucky Heart Association Chair of Cardiovascular Research. As the first chairman of medicine appointed by Dean Lopez in 1975 in the four-year medical school, I, predict, pre, I predated Dr. Eugene Firth, who became the second chairman of medicine in the four-year medical school. I retired as Emeritus Professor of Medicine and Physiology in, in 2001. Dr. Kateria started here in 1978 as head of the section of pulmonary and critical care medicine in the Department of Medicine, recruited by Dr. Firth. Dr. Kateria came to ECU from Ohio State University 
College of Medicine after five years of continued experience in pulmonary medicine at, on the faculty at Ohio State University. He had prior chest ex medical experience in the United Kingdom, as was already alluded to, and received the MD degree from Clancy Medical College in Punjab, India, 1959. At Ohio State University, Dr. Kateria began his concentrated research work on sarcoidosis as a hyperimmune disease. With his recruitment to ECU, I speculate that he would be an excellent clinical investigator concerning sarcoidosis in North Carolina. Pine tree pollen had been suggested by a scientist at Duke as a possible agent in causing sarcoidosis. At ECU, Dr. Kateria has done much outstanding work in teaching, treating chest diseases in patients, emphasizing scholarship, and doing research work, especially related to sarcoidosis. He is the author or co-author of at least 62 medical journal articles and has been an editorial board member on a number of medical journals. When Dr. Kateria was acting chairman of medicine in 1986-87, he instituted the annual one-day presentation of research papers by members of the Department of Medicine. The 22 annual Internal Medicine Research Day takes place tomorrow. Now, sarcoidosis is a lymphogranulatomes, a lymphogranulatomous disease, first described by Sir Hutchinson of England in 1869. C. Hutchinson in the Archives of Surgery, Volume 9, 1898. The disease is particularly common in North American blacks and in Northern European countries. The cause of the disease is still unknown in 2008. The disease may result from one cause or a collection of similar reactions to multiple causes. And there is evidence that free radical oxidative stress is involved in the pathogenesis. I remember Dr. Kateria as a very inquiring medical professor who asked indicated questions after many medical grand rounds presentations by other doctors at Pitt County Memorial Hospital. I am reminded by Dr. Kateri's work on sarcoidosis in the question in English from the first aphorism of Hippocrates, the father of medicine. Quote, life is short and the art long and judgment difficult. My high regards and best wishes to Dr. Kateria. With compliments, I wish to give him now an inscribed copy of my letter to the editor of the JAMA in 2007 and a reprint of my published paper in gerontology in 2008 concern free radical oxidative stress. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, and it's wonderful to see all of you here to honor a special friend. It's difficult to define one's 30-year relationship with a friend and a colleague. 
in a matter of minutes, but I've been told by Monty that's all I have. <laughs> there are a lot of people that have the same feelings that I do. We are all here tonight to honor and to celebrate the accomplishments and contributions that Dr. Yash Kataria has made, not only to our medical community, but to Eastern North Carolina. In the mid-1970s, after the battle for the School of Medicine was won, the task at hand was to recruit clinical faculty who would be committed to the mission of the medical school, that is, primary patient care, education, teaching, and research. Dr. Jean Firth, chairman of the Department of Medicine, saw in Dr. Kataria the perfect choice to become the first chief of pulmonary medicine as he embodied the mission. Yash had already established himself, as you have seen, as a sarcoidosis expert and had many credits on his bio when he arrived at ECU. Once here, however, he quickly rolled up his sleeves and became one of the worker bees. There were no senior medical students. There were no residents. There were no fellows. And the scene at that time was very different. He quickly demonstrated his ability to multitask. I kind of think of this as a woman thing. Most of us in the, women, in the audience know that women can multitask, but Yash could really multitask. <laughs> his reputation jump-started his sarcoid clinic, and his professional and knowledgeable manner earned him the respect and the confidence of physicians throughout the state of North Carolina. And soon he had a very thriving clinical practice. Students looked forward to his hands-on approach to his patients. Yash never missed an opportunity to share his knowledge with students and colleagues. I never had a patient experience with Dr. Kataria that I myself did not learn something. And there were many, many of these over the years that Yash and I practiced together. I did medical oncology, and so our patients very often had to call upon the services of pulmonary medicine. And lastly, Yash recognized many, many years ago that better patient care is always brought about by research, and his efforts have brought to fruition the establishment of Research Day, a day now appropriately named in his honor. And so I and all of the people in this audience, Yash, extend to you and your family, and thank you so much for your steadfast dedication to the mission, for your years of service in so many capacities, for your loyalty to the School of Medicine, but most of all, for your friendship. And I thank you so much. Our next uh, speaker is uh, Dr. Lee West, pathologist at uh, Pitt County Memorial Hospital. Well, it's kind of moving to, to hear comments from people that have known Yash for several decades in the professional context, a perspective that I certainly as a newcomer to Eastern North Carolina don't have. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Um, Kaburu, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to have the opportunity to speak in honor of our honoree tonight, uh, Dr. Yash Kataria. However, I think Dr. Kaburu is sending me a message when <clears throat> the 
speakers preceding me are all either former chancellors, former professors, former chairmen, and all, most all are younger than I am. I, I think you're sending me a message there. Uh, at any rate, I think that Dr. Kataria's uh, accomplishments have been uh, pointed to very nicely by former speakers, and so I don't plan to recite those. What I want to point out is <clears throat> what a brave man he was in coming to Greenville in 1978. <laughs> I'd been here, uh, what, uh, 12 years prior to that. And so let me give you an idea of what Greenville was like in those days. <clears throat> There was no McDonald's. <laughs> the, the, the only four-lane street in town was Memorial Drive. Stansburg Road was a quiet two-lane highway that led to really nowhere in particular, and that's not how you got to Raleigh. In, in those days, Highway 264 went down what is now Highway 13. It was 13 and 264, Dickinson Avenue, and you went through Farmville and ambled through a number of uh, small towns, and it was a two-lane highway also. Uh, Pitt Plaza was the only shopping mall, now Colonial Mall, was the only shopping mall in town. Uh, there was no Arlington Village, and there was no Arlington Boulevard. The medical staff was less than 100 physicians, though we did have most of the major specialties represented at that time. And there was no Brody Building and no North Tower and of course no cardiac institute and no health sciences uh, school, which is now all part of West Campus. In fact, I can remember when the uh, county commissioners and the medical leadership of that era uh, recommended and, uh, and purchased 100 acres of land, uh, the citizens of Pitt County all uh, felt that we should see the nearest local psychiatrist in a big hurry. They, they could not believe we made such a dumb decision. At any rate, uh, Yash, you've contributed a lot to the growth of Greenville and Pitt County and to the medical community here, and for that we're grateful. And uh, as one who first met you discussing a culture in microbiology, uh, the laboratory at that time was about a quarter the size of the present micro lab, but I remember very well you and I talked about a culture, a lung culture of something. I don't remember what you were looking for, and I hope we found it for you. But anyway, <laughs> that, that's how we met. And I'm proud to say that um, uh, I had the honor of doing some of the uh, surgical pathology reports on Dr. Kataria's early biopsies here at uh, Pitt County Hospital, both lymph node and skin. So, Yash, best wishes, and we're delighted that you are part of our community. I'm not going to repeat all of this. Um, I am going to say that in 1978, when Yash started here, I was starting here also, but it was as a freshman medical student in the first year class. It was the second class that started here at ECU. And so we had Yash for some of our early lectures on, uh, his earliest lectures actually on pulmonary medicine. And I learned about the Kavim test and bronchoscopy and how to examine the sputum. <laughs> um, I left here, went up to that other medical school up the road for my dermatology training, and then came back here. And actually, Gene Firth was doing a sabbatical, uh, getting a geriatric fellowship. And uh, Yash was my first boss here. He was the acting chair of uh, medicine at the time. This is an early picture of the uh, department, and there's some of the speakers. We just saw Mary Robb, who's in the first row there. Bill Wall was a little bit earlier, who's in the back row. Uh, and this was a picture taken around 1980, and Neil and uh, Angie, you probably remember those years, and it's good to see you guys again. Yash was uh, very much a researcher. He was a triple threat. He was a good teacher, a good clinician, and excellent in research, and of course, you've heard about his uh, worked with sarcoidosis. In fact, he was nicknamed Dr. Sarcoidosis here. <laughs> and so, Yash, my congratulations to you along with the rest. We think it's, it's very well 30 years now. And I can't think of a better name for Research Day than Kataria Research Day. Congratulations, Yash. <laughs>